Welcome to lecture number 19 on measure and integration. In the previous lecture, we had started looking at the properties of integral for uh, non-negative measurable functions. We had looked at um, the linearity property of the integral for non-negative uh, measurable functions and then uh, we said we will start looking at the limiting uh, properties of uh, functions which are non-negative measurable and integrals uh, of them. So, today we will uh, prove uh, some important theorems. We will start with proving what is called monotone convergence theorem and then we will prove Fatou's lemma and then uh, go over to uh, define integral for uh, general functions. So, let us uh, look at what is called monotone convergence theorem. Monotone convergence theorem says that let f n be a sequence of functions in class L plus. That means, f n is a sequence of non-negative measurable functions increasing to a function f of x at every point. That means, f of x for every x in x is limit n going to infinity of f n of x. So, we are given a sequence f n of non-negative measurable functions which is increasing and the limit is f of x. Then the claim is the function f belongs to L plus. So, this we have already observed and the additional property is that the integral of the limit f d mu is same as limit of the integrals of f n d mu. That means, whenever a sequence f n of non-negative measurable functions increases to f, then integral of the limit is equal to limit of the integrals. So, this is one of the first important theorem about convergence of uh, sequences of non-negative measurable functions and their integrals. So, let us prove this property. So, we are given f n is a sequence each f n belongs to L plus is a non-negative measurable function for every n bigger than or equal to 1. So, that means that implies there exists a sequence we will denote it by s n j uh, of functions n bigger than or equal to 1 uh, such that s n j are non-negative measurable simple functions for every n and for every j and s n j increases to f of uh, so let us uh, fix the notation which one we are going to vary so let us say that um, the upper one uh, will be fixed so this is going to fn as j goes to infinity so for every n fix snj is a sequence on non negative simple measurable functions increasing to fn's and f n's they increase to f so, we want to uh, show, um, we have already shown, but we will show it again that this implies f belongs to L plus is a non-negative measurable function and integral f d mu is equal to limit n going to infinity integral f n d mu. So, to prove this, we are going to use this sequence essence and construct a new sequence of non-negative simple measurable functions out of it. So, what we will do is the following. So, let us write that for n is equal to 1, okay, that s 1 1, s 1 2, s 1 j, s 1 say j, this converges to f 1. So, the upper index is going to give you. So, s 2 1, S 2 2, S 2 j, this increases to F 2 and in general, we will have S n 1, S n 2, S n j will increase to F n okay, and so on and this increases to f. So, uh, let us uh, observe that as we go from left to right, as we go from left to right, this is increasing. So, everywhere left to right, it is increasing and down to up, that also is increasing. So, 
every uh, sequence if you look at the so this is a this is a array of uh, non negative simple measurable functions each row is increasing to the function on the right side and this is increasing uh, upwards so let us uh, uh, out of this i am going to define so let us look at uh, uh, the function so let me define from this a function so let us define define gn to be the function which is maximum of s and j j between 1 and n so look at uh, so uh, in a sense what we am doing is in this uh, picture uh, look at uh, the one so let us say here is s uh, 1 n and here is s 2 n and here is s n n so i look at this column so s 1 uh, we are looking at the column uh, s n 1 s n uh, so let us look at this column so and call that maximum of this to be g n okay so what is g n so g n is the so let me uh, write again so g n is the maximum so define g n equal to maximum of s j n j 1 to n so uh, so let us observe that each g n is a maximum of non negative simple measurable functions so each g n is a non negative simple measurable function for every n and g n is increasing because at the next stage uh, n plus 1 so all this this is going to be bigger the next stage if we look at g n plus 1 so that is going to be s 1 n plus 1 s 2 n plus 1 and so on s n plus 1 n plus 1 n and s n plus 1 n so all this this one is going to be bigger than everything on the left hand side okay and uh, these are a, we are looking at the maximum so in the in the maximum of this is going to be bigger than or equal to maximum of this because at each the right hand side uh, function is bigger than the left hand side function so this is going to give us that is gn is a increasing sequence of functions so let us write let g be equal to limit n going to infinity of g n. So, g is so all these g n's are increasing and they are going to increase to some function g. So, what we are going to show is g is equal to f. Okay? So, that is what we are going to check. So, let uh, g be equal to. So, then clearly by definition g is a non negative simple measurable function because it is a limit of a increasing sequence of non negative simple uh, measurable functions. So, g belongs to L plus. Also, let us observe also each g n okay, is less than or equal to f n. Each g n is less than or equal to f n for every n right so that is because see g n is the maximum of this so and the maximum of this each one of them is less than f1 is less than f2 is less than f n so the maximum of these g n's is less going to be less than or equal to this f n for every n and f n is increasing to f so that will imply that so g n is less than or equal to f n for every f and f n is less than or equal to f. So, implies that g n is less than or equal to f n and is less than or equal to f for every n. So, hence 
and g n is increasing to g. So, that implies g is less than or equal to f. So, that is one observation that the function g is less than or equal to f and we claim that the other way around is also true. So, claim is that f is also less than or equal to g. So, let us note note that for every j between 1 and n, if I look at s j n, g n is the maximum of this. So, this is less than or equal to uh, g n for uh, every n. So, this is less than or equal to uh, g n for every n and j j between less than this. So, if we fix n g n is less than or equal to so so uh, and this is less than or equal to g so s j n is less than or equal to g n is less than or equal to g for every j between 1 and n and for every n so let us now fix j and let n go to infinity so as n goes to infinity what happens so this uh, converges to f n. So, so note that as, as, as n goes to infinity, s j n goes to f j. So, from this and this, these two observations, s n j is less than or equal to g for every. So, if we fix j and uh, let n go to infinity, then n is going to cross over j and s n j, j n as n goes to infinity converges to f of j. So, this implies f of j is less than or equal to uh, g for every j. So, this we so we get so implies that f j is less than or equal to g for every j and f n uh, f j's are increasing. So, this implies that f is also less than or equal to g. So, so we have already shown g is less than or equal to f and now we are saying f is less than or equal to g. So, this implies that f is equal to g. So, hence, so one observation from here is hence that g belongs to L plus. So, f belongs to L plus. Okay. So, we have once again proved that uh, if f n are increasing uh, to a function f and f n are non negative measurable, then f is also non negative measurable. And now note that integral of f d mu is same as integral of g d mu, because f is equal to g and this is equal to limit n going to infinity of integral g n d mu, because g n s are non negative simple measurable increasing to g. So, by definition this is so, but each g n is less than or equal to f if you recall. So, each g n is less than or equal to f. So, integral of g n will be less than or equal to integral of f. So, limit of integrals of f n will be less than or equal to integral f. So, this is less than or equal to integral f d mu. Okay. Uh, or we can even introduce in between. So, g n is less than or equal to f n. So, it is less than or equal to limit n going to infinity integral f n d mu, which is less than or equal to integral f d mu. So, what does this imply? Integral f d mu is less than or equal to limit f n uh, integral of f n d mu and that is less than or equal to f d mu. So, that implies that integral of f d mu is equal to limit n going to infinity integral f n d mu. So, that proves the theorem completely namely integral of f d mu is equal to limit uh, n going to infinity integral of f n d mu. So, this is a construction which is uh, quite useful in. Uh, so, this is the kind of uh, analysis one has to carry out. So, let us go through the proof again. So, that we understand what we are doing. Each f j or f n is a measurable function. So, I can look at a sequence s 1 1 s 1 2 s 1 j s 1 n which is going to increase to f 1. Similarly, the upper fix is fixed at 2 
So, S 2 1, S 2 2, S 2 j, S 2 n that increases to F 2 and so on. So, each row is increasing to the function on the right side and the functions f 1, f 2, f n are increasing to the function f. So, what we do? We look at the maximum of this column. So, what is this column? This column is the maximum of the functions s 1 n, s 2 n and s n n. So, call this as g n. So, this function is called g n. So, the observation is each g n is a maximum of non negative simple measurable function. So, it is non negative simple measurable. Each g n is less than or equal to f n, because we are going only going up to all this corner only. Okay. So, each g n is less than or equal to, because s 1 n is less than f 1, s 2 n is less than f 2, f 1 is less than f 2 and so on. So, this says g n will be less than or equal to f n and each f n is less than or equal to f. So, each g n is less than or equal to f n is less than f. So, if we write the limit of g, g n to be, so we write the limit of this to be equal to g, then g is less than or equal to f by this simple construction. Also, for any uh, fixed j, let us look at s n j. So, let us look at s n j, where j is fixed uh, and n is going to vary. So, as n varies, what happens to these functions? So, for every fixed j, this uh, uh, sequence of uh, functions is going to um, be uh, s n j is less than or equal to g n okay, and g n is less than or equal to f. So, uh, we let uh, g is less than or equal to f. So, s uh, sorry s n j is less than or equal to uh, g n for j between uh, for between 1 and n. So, that will give us that uh, f is also less than or equal to g. So, that will prove the theorem that limit of increasing sequence of non negative measurable functions, if f n is a sequence of non negative measurable functions increasing to f, then integral of f d mu is equal to limit of n going to infinity integral f n d mu. So, this is called monotone convergence theorem. Monotone because we are looking at monotonically increasing sequences f n and convergence because we are looking at the convergence of the integrals of integral f n d mu. So, this proves monotone convergence theorem. And let us remark we have proved the uh, theorem monotone convergence theorem for when f n is a increasing sequence. So, naturally the question arises will the uh, similar result hold if I have a decreasing sequence f n of non negative measurable functions. Uh, that result uh, unfortunately is not true. So, here is an example which says that if f n is a sequence of functions which are non negative measurable and they decrease to a function f then integral of f need not be equal to integral of f n d mu. And the example is on the Lebesgue measurable space. So, look at um, x to be the real line, the sigma algebra to be the sigma algebra of uh, Lebesgue measurable sets and mu to be the Lebesgue measure. Now look at the function f n, which is an indicator function of the interval n to infinity. So, the claim is so, this is actually a non negative simple measurable function each f n and f n uh, is decreasing and decreasing to the identity function identically equal to 0. That is quite obvious to see. So, what is f n? So, we are looking at, so here is n and we are looking at uh, the interval n to infinity. So, we are looking at this interval okay, and we are looking at the indicator function of n to infinity. So, the function is 0 and it is 1 here. So, the function is this height is 1. So, this is the function f n. It is 0 here up to here and then it starts and goes. So, that is the function f n. So, um, if we take n plus 1. So, this is n plus 1. So, n plus 1 will be 0 here, but f n is equal to 1 here. So, clearly f n of x is bigger than or equal to f n plus 1 of x for every x. So, f n is a sequence in L plus 
and f n is decreasing. And the claim is f n decreases to f of x, which is identically equal to 0 for every x. And that, because if I take any point x on the real line, then I can find some integer n, say n naught, which is on the right side of it. Then, uh, so for every x belonging to real line fix, I can find a point n naught, a positive integer n naught. Of course, it will depend on x such that n naught of x is bigger than x. So, that will imply that the indicator function of n naught to infinity or uh, n naught to infinity, uh, let us even n to infinity at x is going to be equal to 0 for every n bigger than or equal to n naught and that is my f n of x. So, f n of x is equal to 0 for every n bigger than n. So, that means f n of x converges to f of x which is equal to 0. So, f n is a sequence of uh, non-negative measurable functions which is decreasing to f identically 0, but we, if we look at the integral of uh, each f n. So, what is the integral of each f n? So, integral of f n d lambda. So, uh, this is integral of the indicator function n to infinity d lambda. So, that is equal to lambda of n to plus infinity and that is equal to plus infinity for every n. So, integral of um, f n is equal to plus infinity for every n and integral of f d lambda is equal to f is 0. So, it is 0. So, this implies that integral f n d lambda does not converge to integral f d lambda whenever uh, f n is a decreasing sequence of function non negative simple uh, non negative uh, even simple functions we have given example here. So, for decreasing sequences uh, this uh, result does not hold. So, that gives uh, uh, importance to the monotone convergence theorem that means, whenever a sequence f 1 of non negative measurable functions is increasing then integral f is equal to limit integral f n d mu for decreasing this uh, need not hold. So, this is what we have uh, shown just now by an example. So, however, one can prove uh, uh, not an equality, but some kind of inequality for a sequence of non-negative measurable functions and that is also an important result. So, let us uh, prove uh, the result which is called Fatou's lemma. It says let f n be a sequence of non-negative measurable functions, then the integral of limit inferior of f n d mu is less than or equal to limit inferior of uh, the integrals f n the d mu. So, this is only an inequality and it need not be an equality. So, what we are saying is if f n is a sequence of non negative measurable functions, then it is always true that the integral of the limit inferior of f n is less than or equal to limit inferior of the uh, integrals. So, uh, let us uh, uh, give a proof of uh, this theorem. So, to prove this theorem, so, let us just first recall what is. So, f n is a sequence of non negative measurable functions. So, each f n is a non negative measurable function and we want to look at limit inferior of f n as n goes to infinity. This is a function. So, let us observe how this function is defined limit inferior of f n at a point x is defined as you, you take the infimum from some stage onwards. So, m bigger than or equal to n of f n of x. So, look at the numbers f n of x, f m of x for m bigger than or equal to n. So, I am looking at the tail of the sequence f n of x from m onwards. So, this number infimum will depend on m. So, let me take the supremum of this overall m. So, first take the infimum from some stage onwards and then take the supremum of these infimums. So, uh, let us observe that this infimum, let us put a bracket here. So, observe, so let me call it as phi m to be the infimum 
from the stage n onward. So, infimum of m bigger than or equal to n of f n of x phi n of x to be defined as the infimum from the stage n onwards of f m of x. So, then um, because it is the infimum of, uh, of a sequence of uh, functions which are non negative measurable. So, clearly so note so observation is that each phi n is also a non negative measurable function. So, it is a non negative measurable function that is 1. And secondly, we are taking the infimum from some stage n onwards. So, if we uh, increase, so the claim is this phi n is increasing. This is an increasing sequence because phi, so phi n uh, from the infimum from the stage n onwards is going to be uh, less than or equal to the infimum from the stage n plus 1 onwards, because we will have more numbers for which you are taking infimum. So, infimum can uh, infimum uh, when you take infimum over more numbers, then infimum can decrease. So, infimum from the stage n onwards and the infimum from the stage n plus on n plus 1 onwards. So, that uh, says that the infimum from the stage n plus 1 onwards will be bigger than or equal to the infimum. So, increasing that is phi n plus 1 is bigger than or equal to phi n of x for every n. So, it is an increasing sequence of non negative measurable functions and its limit is nothing but the limit inferior. So, it is increasing and so it is increasing and limit n going to infinity of phi n is equal to limit inferior of f n n going to infinity. So, the stage is set perfect for uh, an application of uh, monotone convergence theorem phi n is a sequence of non negative measurable functions phi n is are increasing. So, by monotone convergence theorem, so we can apply implies by monotone convergence theorem, monotone convergence theorem by monotone convergence theorem that integral of limit n going to infinity of phi n d mu okay, is equal to limit integral phi n d mu n going to infinity. So, this is nothing but so, this side is nothing left hand side is nothing but integral of limit inferior n going to infinity of f n d mu. So, that is equal to limit of integral phi n. Now, let us look at what is phi n. Phi n is the infimum from the stage n onwards. So, each phi n is less than or equal to f n. So, that is the observation from here by the definition of phi n we have that that each phi n is less than or equal to f n. So, integral of phi n will be less than or equal to integral of f n. So, it will be less than or equal to limit inferior of n going to infinity. So, what we are observing here is because each phi n is less than or equal to f n. So, this implies. So, this is what we are using here that each phi n is less than or equal to f n. Then the end limit and integrals of phi n are increasing. So, it limit exists. So, limit n going to infinity integral phi n d mu is less than or equal to. However, integral of phi n f n may not exist. So, we can say that it will be less than or equal to limit inferior of uh, integral f n d mu. So, this is what is being used in this uh, conclusion and that proves the theorem. Uh, what is called uh, the Fatou's lemma. So, we have two important uh, results uh, for uh, uh, for non negative. So, we have got two important results for uh, sequences of non negative measurable functions. One of them uh, is called um, the monotone convergence theorem, which says if f n is an increasing sequence of functions, 
non-negative measurable functions increasing to a function f, then integrals of f n will converge to integral of f. So, keep in mind the monodon convergence theorem is for a non-negative sequence of non-negative measurable functions which is increasing to f. And in case um, the sequence of non-negative measurable functions is not increasing, then we have what Fortus lemma which says that the, uh, for any sequence f n of non-negative uh, measurable functions, um, the integral of the limit inferior of f n is going to be less than or equal to is always less than or equal to limit inferior of the integrals. So, this is these are the two important theorems which uh, help us to relate um, the limit of the integrals with the integral of the uh, limits and we will see applications of this uh, in uh, rest of our course. So, with this we uh, conclude the section on the definition of integral for non-negative simple uh, non-negative measurable function. So, let us just recall what we have done. We started with defining the integral of non-negative simple measurable functions, the functions which look like linear combinations of indicator functions sigma a i indicator functions of a i. For them we defined the integral to be nothing but a i times uh, summation of a i times mu of a i. We showed it is independent of the representation and we proved various properties of the integral for non-negative simple measurable functions. And then we looked at the class of non-negative measurable functions. Since every non-negative measurable function is a limit of some sequence of non-negative simple measurable functions increasing to that function f. So, we define integral of the non-negative measurable function to be nothing but the limit of the integrals of that sequence of non-negative simple measurable functions increasing to it. And we showed this integral is independent of the limit uh, of the sequence uh, S n you choose you select which increases to f and then we proved various properties including monotone convergence theorem and uh, Fatou's lemma. And now, let us uh, look at how can we define the integral for a function which is not necessarily non-negative. So, for that we will do the following. So, we will start with, so let us look at a function f. So, keep in mind we have got a measure space x s mu which is complete. F is a function which is defined on x taking extended real valued and we want to define. So, to define integral f d mu, this is what we want to know what it should look like. And of course, we would like this integral to have nice properties. So, we would like to have it to be a fun integral to be a linear operation. Now, recall so, let us recall the function f can be written as f plus minus f minus. We can split it into two parts, the positive part and the negative part of the function, where f plus and f minus both are non-negative functions. And if f is measurable, of course, with respect to the sigma algebra S, that is true if and only if both f plus f minus are measurable. So, f can be written, so this is the clue how we should go about. So, f can be written as a difference of two non-negative measurable functions if f is measurable and integral of non-negative functions is defined. So, integral of f plus is defined integral of f minus is defined and if our integration is going to be linear, it is uh, all but uh, necessary that our integral. So, we should define integral f d mu whatever uh, be the um, way we define it, it should have the property this is f plus d mu minus integral of f minus d mu. So, this is what we would like to have. This is defined, this is defined. Now, the question is, is the difference defined. So, the difference will be defined if both of these quantities are finite numbers. So, the left hand side it is defined 
if f plus d mu is finite and integral f minus d mu is finite. So, that says, so that means whenever f is a measurable function, so that integral f plus d mu is finite, integral f minus d mu is finite, we can define its integral to be equal to integral equal to integral of f plus d mu minus integral f minus d mu. So, with that we let us define what is the integral, what is called a integrable function. So, a measurable function f defined on x taking extended real value uh, real values is said to be mu integrable. Of course, so mu is the measure underlying space which is fixed. So, it is said to be mu integrable if both integral of f plus d mu, f plus is a non negative measurable function, f minus is a non negative measurable function. So, by our earlier discussion both these numbers f plus d mu and f minus d mu are defined. So, if they are both finite in that case we say that the function f is integrable and its integral is defined as integral f plus minus integral f minus. So, integral of f is defined as integral of the positive part of the function minus the integral of the negative part of the function. So, whenever a function f is uh, defined on x, we say f is integrable if both the positive part and the negative part have finite integrals and in that case we define the integral of f, so written as integral f d mu to be integral of f plus minus integral of f minus. So, we will denote by the symbol capital L lower 1 x s mu to be the class of all mu integrable functions. So, in case it is clear what is x and what is mu and what is uh, uh, s, we can simp so sometimes simply write it as L 1 of x or simply L 1 of mu. So, if we understand what is underlying measure space. So, the space of integrable functions either it will be explicitly written as L 1 x s mu or sometimes simply as L 1 of x or L 1 of mu. So, this is the class of all integrable functions that means, all functions f say that integral f plus is finite, integral f minus is finite and in that case integral of f is defined as integral f plus minus integral of f minus. So, for all integrable functions f belonging to L 1 of x, we have integral f d mu. We will now study the properties of uh, this integral. So, the first property is uh, let us uh, fix functions f and g which are integrable and f and g to be which are f and g to be real number a and g to be real numbers. So, if f and g are measurable functions that mod f of x is less than uh, g of x for almost all x and g belongs to L 1, then the claim is f is in L 1. So, this is a very simple property we want to check namely that if. So, let us f and g are measurable functions are measurable functions on x and we are given that mod f of x is less than or equal to g f x almost everywhere mu. So, from here we first claim is that if g is L 1 of x, then that implies that f is in L 1 of x. So, to prove that let us observe. So, note we are given f x is less than or equal to g x almost everywhere x. So, let us define n to be the set of all points x belonging to x, where mod f of x is not less than or equal to g of x, where this property is not true. Then, we know that n belongs to the sigma algebra and mu of n is equal to 0. Okay n of n is equal to 0. Now, note 
because mod of f is a non negative. So, mod f belongs to L plus g is non negative measurable. So, g belongs to L plus and on uh, is almost everywhere. So, mod f of x is less than or equal to g of x on n complement. Okay. So, that is what is given to us. So, thus implies integral mod f x d mu x, which we can write as integral over n mod f x d mu x plus integral over n complement mod f x d mu. And now, let us observe. So, now let us observe that the set n has got measure 0. So, this part is 0 and on n complement on n complement f is uh, mod f is less than or equal to g. So, this is equal to 0 plus integral over n complement of mod f x d mu x and on n complement f is less than or equal to g. So, this is less than or equal to integral over n complement of g of x d mu x and that is less than or equal to integral over the whole space g of x d mu x, which is uh, finite. So, what we have shown is that in case mod f x is less than or equal to g x, then we have shown that uh, the integral of mod f, f is finite. So, this says, so hence integral mod f d mu is finite. And now, let us note that f plus is always less than or equal to mod f and f minus is also less than or equal to mod f. For any function, the positive part is less than or equal to mod f, the negative part also is less than or equal to mod f. So, that implies that integral f plus d mu and integral f minus d mu both of them are less than or equal to integral mod f and which is finite. So, we have shown that the integral of f plus and integral of f minus both are finite whenever mod of f is less than or equal to. So, whenever so what we have shown is whenever mod so this property is true this implies that integral of f plus and integral of f minus both are finite. So, that implies so implies f belongs to L 1 and further let us calculate what is integral of mod f d mu. Mod f if you recall is nothing but f plus plus f minus. Uh, f plus plus f minus. So, that means, this is equal to integral d mu plus integral of f minus d mu. So, integral of mod f is nothing but integral of f plus plus integral of f minus um, uh, d mu. And both of them are finite. So, that we have already observed. So, I wanted to check that integral of mod f is uh, less than or equal to uh, integral of uh, integral g d mu, which we have already actually checked. Okay. So, we have already uh, checked that integral of uh, f plus, so which is uh, less than integral of uh, mod f is less than. So, mod f is less than uh, integral g uh, implies, so we do not have to do this. So, is less than or equal to integral g d mu. So, that follows from directly from that mod f now we have shown is integrable is integral is finite and so this is less than or equal to integral of g. So, this proves the first property namely if f and g are measurable functions and mod f x is less than or equal to g x for almost all uh, x and if g is integrable then f is integrable. So, what we are saying is if if a function f of x which is measurable is dominated by a function g 
which is integrable, then the function f also becomes integrable. Let us look at uh, uh, next the property that if f and g are equal almost everywhere and f is integrable, then g is integrable and the integrals of the two are equal. And that property is something similar to that we have just now shown, uh, a similar analysis will work. So, let us look at we have got two functions f and g and f of x is equal to g of x almost everywhere mu. So, let us write the set n x belonging to x where f x is not equal to g x. Then by the given condition mu of n okay, not equal to that is equal to 0 and f x equal to g x for every x belonging to n complement. right? So, now let us look at, uh, so we are given that the function f is f belonging to L 1. Okay. So, implies we want to show that g belongs to L 1 and that is because if f x is equal to g x almost everywhere, then that implies that mod f x is also less than or equal to mod g x almost everywhere. Right? The sets where they are not equal, so wherever they are equal, so that is mod x is equal to g x. So, because on then complement that will happen, so this is less than or equal. So, that implies integral of uh, f x is equal to g x. So, sorry, uh, so we should say that f x is equal to g x almost everywhere. So, that implies f x is equal to g x mod f x is equal to mod x. So, and just now we showed that whenever f and g are equal almost everywhere, integral mod f is equal to integral mod g d mu. So, either of them finite implies other is finite, we are given this is finite. So, implies mod g d mu is finite. So, implies once again that g is L 1 and g is L 1. So, integral of g d mu is equal to integral g plus d mu minus integral g minus d mu, but f is equal to g almost everywhere. We ask the reader to verify this that means, f of uh, f plus must be equal to g plus and f minus must be equal to g minus almost everywhere. So, once again this integral is equal to minus integral of f plus d mu minus integral of f minus d mu, which is nothing but equal to integral of f d mu. So, integral g is equal to integral f whenever f and g are equal almost everywhere. So, these are simple properties of uh, integrable functions that we have looked at. So, if f is equal to g almost everywhere and one of them is integrable, then the other is integrable and the two integrals are equal. Next, let us check uh, the property of linearity. So, if f is L 1, then we want to check that alpha f is also in L 1 and alpha f of d mu is equal to alpha times uh, integral of f d mu. So, to check that property, uh, let us uh, just observe one thing that saying that uh, just now we looked at this kind of analysis, namely if f belongs to L 1 of x, it is same as if and only if mod f belongs to L 1 of x. Right? So, why is that? Once again let us do this, because this we are going to use it again and again. See, saying that f belongs to L 1, this implies integral of f plus d mu is finite and integral of f minus d mu is finite. Okay. Now, so that implies because what is mod f? Mod f is equal to f plus plus f minus. So, that implies integral f plus d mu plus integral f minus d mu is finite and this is equal to integral of mod f d mu. So, f belonging to L 1 implies integral of mod f uh, uh, is finite. Conversely, so let us look at the converse part. 
that if mod f integral is finite, so let us uh, so conversely. So, let us this is given to us that integral of mod f d mu is finite. So, once again uh, let us observe that f plus is less than or equal to mod f and f minus is less than or equal to mod f. Okay. So, that implies all are non-negative uh, measurable functions. So, it implies integral of f plus d mu is less than integral mod f d mu which is finite and integral f minus d mu is less than integral mod f d mu which is finite. So, that implies that f belongs to L 1. So, saying that a function is integrable is equivalent to saying that mod f which is a non negative measurable function has got finite integral. So, this property will be used again and again and uh, let us uh, see how that property is used in uh, uh, in our uh, proposition now so a belongs to real line uh, and f is l1 so look at mod of af so mod of af is less than or equal to mod a mod f all are non negative functions so integral of mod af is less than or equal to uh, integral of this which is mod a times integral mod f d mu which is finite so, that implies that a f is integrable function. Okay. And so, now we can write not only it is integrable, integral of a f d mu, you can write as integral of a f plus d mu minus integral of a f minus d mu. And now, uh, possibilities either a is equal to 0 in this case a f will be 0 and everything is 0. So, no problem. If a is positive, then this part is same as a times f plus d mu minus a times integral f minus d mu if a is positive. And so, this uh, a comes out because of the property for non negative measurable uh, for integral of non negative measurable functions. So, this will be finite. In case a is less than 0, this becomes uh, a of uh, minus uh, negative part again that thing is ok. So, similarly for a minus. So, that proves the property that if f is integrable and a is a real number then a f is integrable and a comes out. So, uh, we will continue looking at the properties of uh, uh, integrable functions uh, in the next lecture we will show that uh, in this integral is a linear operation on the space of uh, integrable functions and various other properties of uh, this uh, space of integrable functions and integral on it. So, we will continue this study in the next lecture. Thank you.